There is a growing number of local families who just don't have enough to eat, and there's new data that shows the crisis is even worse for communities of color and LGBTQ residents. Here to talk about this, Dr. Alice Connors Kelgren, a clinical psychologist at Tufts Medical Center. Good to see you, doctor. Nice to see you. And doctor, the Greater Boston Food Bank uh, now says that 34% of households in the state actually run out of money to buy food every month. Why is that a mental health problem? Mm -hmm. So we often don't think about food insecurity as being a mental health problem, but people living with food insecurity are actually two to three times as likely to meet criteria for anxiety and depression. And there's really two major reasons for this. The first is that our brains and bodies need consistent and nutritious food intake to stay regulated and to create the neurotransmitters or the chemicals that help brain cells communicate with one another that keep us feeling happy and healthy. And the second reason is that food insecurity leads to chronic stress, always wondering and worrying about where the next meal is coming from, which can result in feelings of anxiety, low mood, low self-esteem, a perceived loss of control, a helplessness, and difficulty functioning. And it can also, that chronic stress, cause physical problems as well. Isn't that right, doctor? Definitely. So chronic stress creates a lot of wear and tear on the major systems of our body, like our respiratory system, our cardiovascular system, and that can lead to chronic physical health conditions as well. So, for example, people living in food insecure households, which, as we just discussed, is a form of chronic stress, have higher rates of all kinds of chronic health conditions like hypertension, diabetes, cancer, and even stroke. And doctor, a lot of people may feel stuck in this crisis, like they can't get out. What do you want them to know? So the biggest barrier for many adults in seeking support for food insecurity is the stigma and the shame that comes along with that. So it's really important to remember that there is no shame. I mean, we just talked about 34% of households are struggling to have enough to eat. Um, so there's no shame in accessing federal or state benefits or relying on a food pantry to fill the gaps. This is a systemic issue, not a reflection of any individual person. Dr. Connors Kelgren, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Thank you, doctor. Thank you.